Okay, geometry, chapter 10, section seven, special segments in circles. All right, so now we're gonna be looking at segment length. Uh, last section we looked at angles, and so we'll just uh, change it up just a little bit. So let's take a circle, and let's put in it uh, two intersecting chords. Okay, so something like that. We'll go ahead and get a quick label on these. Let's call this A, B, and C, D. And let's say that they intersect at point E. Okay, so the rule for this one is, is if you have two chords, again, it's two chords, and they intersect, then the product of the small section plus the product uh, excuse me, the product of the small section times the larger section is equal to the product of the small section of the other one times the large section. So here's what it looks like. AE times EB will be equal to CE times ED. Now, let's make it clear that the order in multiplication really doesn't matter. So you could have EB first and AE just as long as we look at the segments together. Let me go ahead and color code those. So AE times EB and then we're going to multiply that times these two segments. Okay, so there's our two cross sections. So let's get an example of this. Okay, so we're going to solve for x in this one. Um, I could go ahead and label label this again. Let's call this one AB. Let's call this one CD. And there in the middle is going to be E. And so I'm going to multiply the pieces. So that's going to be x times x plus 12. And that's going to be equal to x plus 6 times x plus 2. Okay, first one's going to be distributed property, so that's just x squared plus 12x. Second one's going to be FOIL method, so x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12. So we have uh, like terms on both sides, the exact same thing. So x squareds are going to cancel. That's going to leave me with 12x equals, let's go ahead and combine those, 2x plus 6x is 8x. Subtract our 8x from both sides. And that gives us 4x equals 12, divide both sides by 4, and our x length is 3. Okay, so be careful what they're asking for. If they just want you to solve for x, you are done. If they want you to find the actual lengths, then you'll need to substitute those back in. Okay, so that is two chords intersecting in a circle. So let's move on to our next one. Our next one is going to be our two secants, which this should look real familiar to what we did yesterday. And so we're going to go from the same exterior point, let's call that one, and that one. I'll label these up. Okay, for two secants drawn from the same exterior point, this is going to be little section times entire piece is congruent to little section times entire piece. Okay. 
So AB times AC is congruent to AD times AE. And so now let's look at some examples. Let's say let's say this is x, this is 9, and let's go with 4 and 5. Okay, so let's substitute those values. AB is x. I'm going to leave everything in parentheses. AC, the whole thing, is going to be x plus 9. AD is 4. And in this case, AE is going to be 9. So that gives me, I do distributive property again, x squared plus 9x equals 36. So I'm going to subtract that 36, because I'm going to have to solve this trinomial. And so let's factor it up. I need products that multiply to get negative 36 and add to get positive 9. And so I'm going to go with positive 12 minus 3. And now to solve this, I set both factors equal to 0. And so this one is negative 12. And this one is 3. Now, I need to substitute both of those in and make sure that they work. So I've got negative 12 and 3. Okay. Obviously, if x is negative 12, that means ab has a distance of negative 12, and that is not going to work. So logically, this one cannot work. That gives me a final answer of x equals 3. Okay. The final one, we have a tangent and a secant. And so this one is very specific. In this case, we're going to take a, b, and square it. And that's going to equal the small segment times the entire segment. Okay? So your tangent is going to be equal to the smaller piece of the secant times the entire secant. So let's look at an example on this. Let's go with 8 and x and 7. So AB is going to be 8 squared. AC is x. And AD is x plus 7. Kind of see a pattern here. It looks kind of similar to the last one. Probably going to end up with a trinomial on this one. So we've got 64 equals x squared plus 7x. I'm going to subtract that 64 from both sides. And so now I have x squared plus 7x minus 64. Okay, so I need to think of factors of 64 that are going to multiply to get negative 64 and add to get 7. In this case, I'm not going to be able to factor it like we did the other one. So if I have a trinomial that can't be factored, there's only one way that I can find its solutions, and that is by using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula, as we remember from Algebra 1 last year, is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? And I know some of you are thinking, you know what, Mr. Renault, it would be really cool if you sang that song that you taught us last year. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Those of you who didn't learn the quadratic formula from the song, it goes just like this. It goes to the tune Pop Goes the Weasel. And it goes, 
x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so if you don't know that, you can go ahead and rewind and listen to that a couple of times. And if you already know the quadratic formula and you don't need it, then you're in good shape. So we've got a equal 1, b is equal to 7, and c is equal to negative 64. Oop, let's extend the page. Let's get rid of that. All right, let's start substituting in. Here we go. Negative b is going to be negative 7 plus or minus. 7 squared is going to be 49 minus 4 times 1 times, oh, made a mistake there already, times negative 64. Give me some more space. All over 2 times a, which is going to be 2. So now I've got negative 7 plus or minus square root of 49. And uh, that's going to be a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Uh, 64 times 2 is 128. Times 2 is going to be 100, or excuse me, 256. All right, so negative 7 plus or minus, okay, that comes out to be 305 all over 2. So we need to find the square root of 305. It would help if I could type it incorrectly. And that is 17.464, so that is negative 7 plus or minus 17.464 all over 2. So my first one is negative 7 plus 17.464. That comes out to be 5.23. And this is going to ask to round to the nearest tenth. And so that's going to be approximately 5.2. Then my second one is negative 7 minus 17.464. Divide that by 2, and I get negative 12.2, which is approximately, excuse me, negative 12.23, which is approximately negative 12.2. Okay. Now, in this case, can I have a negative answer? Well, if I have an answer of negative 12.2, if I substituted in, well, let's, let's look at my, my positive answer. Obviously, I can get that. Okay, so looking at those two answers, I just hit pause here just to verify. Um, I was starting to confuse myself a little bit. So if I've got negative 12.2, if I plug in negative 12.2 there, I cannot have a length for AC of negative 12.2. So my only answer is going to be approximately 5.2. Okay, and so that completes 10-7, which is special segments in a circle.